the US drops one of its largest conventional bombs on an ISIL target in Afghanistan. The attack on a complex of tunnels killed dozens of fighters. But what difference will it make to the fight against ISIL? And how big a threat does the armed group pose to the country? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Sahil Rahman. Now, the US has made another big foreign policy statement, this time in Afghanistan. It targeted ISIL fighters in the eastern Nangarhar province using one of its largest and most destructive conventional weapons. Nicknamed the mother of all bombs, the $16 million weapon was dropped over a network of suspected tunnels. Afghanistan's defense ministry says the attack did not cause any civilian deaths. But the former Afghan president, Hamid Karzai, is calling it a brutal misuse of our country. Now, we'll get to our guests in a moment. But first, this report from Whitney Hurst. This Pentagon video shows the moment the U.S. dropped the biggest non-nuclear bomb it's ever used in combat. The target, Afghanistan's Achin district, near the Pakistani border. People here say they could feel it when the so-called mother of all bombs exploded. There were ISIL bases over there, and they had activity in those areas. Last night's bomb was really huge. When it dropped, everything was shaking. This is a positive move that ISIL was eliminated. The U.S. has been testing the GBU-43 bomb, or MOAB, for years. But this is the first time it's been used. It was deployed against a series of ISIL tunnels in Nangahar province. The Afghan Ministry of Defense says dozens of fighters were killed. They believe an ISIL weapons cache was also destroyed. The foreign forces carried out an airstrike last night, which was different from previous attacks. In this strike, ISIL hideouts, which were previously targeted by unmanned aircraft but were not destroyed, were targeted and destroyed. Important and foreign members of ISIL were staying in these hideouts. The U.S. has defended the use of the weapon. This was the right weapon against the right target. I want to assure the people of Afghanistan that our forces take every possible precaution to prevent civilian casualties. The Afghan government has confirmed it knew about the attack before it happened, but not everyone is cheering the U.S. action. Former Afghan President Hamid Karzai took to Twitter to say, I vehemently and in the strongest words condemn the dropping of the latest weapon, the largest non-nuclear bomb in Afghanistan by the U.S. military. This is not the war on terror, but the inhuman and most brutal misuse of our country as a testing ground for new and dangerous weapons. U.S. forces have been battling ISIL in Afghanistan since 2015. They estimate there are 600 to 800 fighters in the country. Whitney Hurst for Inside Story. So what more do we know about ISIL in Afghanistan? Well, its Khorasan branch was formed two years ago by former Taliban defectors. ISIL-linked fighters have captured territory in the eastern Afghan province of Nangarhar, which is close to the border with Pakistan. Now, the group is also trying to get a foothold in the north, where it's been trying to forge links with Central Asian, Chechen and Chinese Uyghur fighters. But it's come under a lot of pressure from the Afghan army, NATO forces and the Taliban. <laughs> Well, let's bring in our guest now. In Kabul, Mirves Yassini, member of the Afghan parliament representing Nangarhar province, where the bomb was dropped. In Washington, Omar Samad, former senior advisor to Afghanistan's chief executive, Abdullah Abdullah. And in Moscow, Vacheslav Mutazov, a former Russian diplomat. Welcome, gentlemen, to this edition of Inside Story. Mr Yassini, can I begin with you in Kabul? You represent Nangarhar province. Why here? when there are so many ISIL cells perhaps in, Afghan in Afghanistan. Why now? Why was it needed? Well, uh, actually, this fighting started uh, uh, three or four years back in Nigrahar in that particular areas, uh, which is uh, north uh, east, uh, southeast of uh, uh, Nigrahar, uh, called Achin Debala Spingar. And uh, the American forces, along with the Afghan National Army and National Police in the National Director of, uh, Directorate of Security Forces, were fighting uh, heavily against Daesh. 
Uh, and uh, honestly, in the, uh, since 19, January 19, six, uh, 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 2016, uh, they started their drones operations, and between three to 4,000 Daesh were killed there, including their leaders like Hafez Majid, Omar Nare, and lately Qadi Yassin and others. Uh, so they had successful uh, uh, operation. They wanted to clear the area completely, but they were stuck. So uh, since four uh, weeks, uh, the NATO forces, uh, led by the American forces, uh, as General Nicholson said very precisely, along with Afghan forces, tried to penetrate into their strongholds, but they couldn't. They uh, were given a very, very hard resistance, and uh, then they had to use this mother of the bombs. But this is not only uh, uh, the mother of the bombs, I mean the... the Small range rocket were used there for weeks, hundreds of them. So obviously uh, a very difficult location. Attacks, Sorry to interrupt. Very, attacks, so very, to, sum up, to sum up, sir, to sum up, sir, a, a very difficult location to get to. Therefore, this particular munition was used to, to, to target ISIL. What sort of message is it sending in terms of, well, to... Afghan politicians as well as to the global political community. We'll talk about the, the, the people on the ground, the, the civilians, but what sort of message well, does it send to terror groups? Well, uh, uh, number one, uh, there were no uh, civilian or collateral damages at all, and, and that is good. Number two, I mean, war, sensible human beings were uh, not like wars or bombing. Uh, number three, uh, uh, there, the, uh, uh, I said we don't know precisely how many ISIS soldiers were, or, or, or militants were killed there. Mm -hmm. Number four, this uh, initiated from the Soviet invasion 27 December 1979. Since that day, Afghanistan never seen a good day in the uh, past 40 years or okay. so history. Okay. Uh, but the repercussion there is the people of the area are happy, Becca, in, in the rest of the Afghanistan are thankful that why those heavy bombs are dropped on us or, or in Afghanistan, but locally people are relieved. Okay, well let's bring in our, our other guest, Omar Samad in Washington DC. Um, obviously there had to be support between both the US and uh, the Afghan government for this particular assault, uh, but it is a huge warning, is it not, to groups that do not wish to see, see, see stability in Afghanistan? Well, we all know that the real problem in Afghanistan for all these years have been the Taliban. IS, KP, Khorasan province, has been a somewhat newer phenomena, a new distraction, and for many Afghans, raising a lot of new questions as to who exactly are they, what are they after, and why are they in Afghanistan at this stage? So. The decision has been taken, at least from a, a kinetic and military and tactical point of view, to get rid of ISIS from Afghanistan. I think that decision uh, uh, and what we saw yesterday uh, uh, is a sign that they are going to go after every ISIS cell that exists in Afghanistan or so-called ISIS cell that exists in Afghanistan. Uh, at the same time, strategically speaking, uh, I believe that um, this is going to send uh, shockwaves as well as messages and strategic messaging and strategic communications to uh, other uh, countries and nations and states and groups, terrorist groups, uh, that uh, are involved in one way or the other against American interests, wherever that may be. It may stretch all the way from North Korea to uh, Pakistan, Iran, uh, and even uh, Russia to some extent, uh, where uh, the an important conference is taking place today mm -hmm. on, on Afghanistan. To get to your question about the Afghan government in the U.S., I think that it's important to make the case that they have claimed that this was coordinated uh, uh, and arranged uh, with the Afghan government, that the Afghan government was involved in this operation. That is very important because the Afghan government has to uh, make sure that its sovereign rights uh, are not violated and that it is part of this operation. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the fact that there is a claim that civilians have not been killed and that IS has lost three dozen or so men uh, also makes this operation uh, to some extent successful. Uh, otherwise, if these claims are denied, uh, then it will make it more complicated. Indeed. Uh, let's bring in uh, Vakislav uh, Mutazov. Thanks for your patience, sir. Now, obviously, there is this low-level security conference going on in Moscow uh, on this particular day. Russia 
at the end of the day, would like to see, like many other countries globally, peace in Afghanistan. How difficult is that, or is Russia's point of view, when it really doesn't see eye to eye uh, with countries such as the United States? They are poles apart when it comes to how Afghanistan and the problem of Afghanistan can be solved. I can say that uh, this uh, occasion was uh, 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 was covered by our press, uh, but not uh, official uh, mar marks I er heard here. I know that Russia is supporting the idea of peaceful solution between Taliban and Afghan government. No, no, uh, well, we, we understand absolutely clear that uh, this blow was in accordance and with approval of uh, legal Afghan government. Nobody can uh, uh, be against. But uh, if we consider it from other point of view, that efforts to bring unstable for negotiations Taliban and uh, Afghan government, well, maybe here is uh, some questions arose in the heads of our politicians. Uh, and, and except I consider that uh, my colleague here is absolutely right when he's saying that it is the chain of events. Syrian blow of American uh, 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 military base or governmental military base, now in Afghanistan where, and concentration of uh, um, uh, American uh, uh, fleet in uh, uh, North Korea uh, seashore. That's why it is maybe showed that it is strategical, political uh, blow, but not uh, practical. Because uh, if uh, I agree that the main danger for us as a Russia, uh, we consider it IS, hmm. who, I, who are now having a st spreading in Afghanistan and threatening uh, our south uh, frontiers, sure. borders. Uh, well, let me just bring in Mira uh, Yassini. How that important was, that was? That was a question. Sure. I mean, uh, how to correspond with common common uh, fight against international uh, terrorism? In terms as of, we proclaimed with Americans. Uh, in terms of, uh, Matos of uh, Mr. Matosov, yeah, I'll just bring in uh, Mr. Yassini here. How important is it, uh, Mira Yassini in Kabul, uh, that ISIL as a group are dealt with and that your international partners, whether they be the United States, whether they be this, uh, Russia or Iran or Pakistan, and as say this, this particular meeting is happening in Moscow at the moment, how important is it uh, that you deal with them together as a group and how difficult is it when you have two major superpowers at different ends of the spectrum in terms of how to deal with ISIL and other groups? Well, uh, first of all, this is a pity that the two major powers are different uh, uh, between themselves and ISIL. Uh, there are misinformation, there are disinformation, and there are a lack of information, uh, particularly on the ISIS area. Uh, the things which I do see, the ISIS is an uh, international terrorist organization, did not fund by any uh, power in the world. There are sus sus some sus uh, uh, suspicion, which is, which is not true in my, uh, 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 in my study, which I do see day-to-day -day matters in Afghanistan. There are Chechen, there are Uyghurs, there are Arabs, there are Pakistani, there are some Iranian, there are uh, Arabs, there are Afghans. Uh, but 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 uh, definitely, I mean, the repercussion of uh, this bomb, which is the subject of the current discussion among ourselves, with all respect to our friends, uh, the Russian uh, diplomat, who is very very correct in uh, in many things. But the repercussions are not as bad as uh, Assad used siren gas or chemical uh, gas on the civilian, uh, poor children, poor women hospitalized for nonsense so i mean let's, uh, let's try and uh, focus no let's just try and focus in have committed yeah let's so let's so, try and so focus on the attack here rather I than mean, spread I it out to a, another debate which is for another day yeah. but, but 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 things we things cannot be alienated from each other mr uh, sahel rahman uh, this is number one but uh, getting people on one table taliban uh, the neighbors uh, the international uh, superpowers, uh, uh, players uh, for peace and talks, that is a very good sign, it's a very good thing. But hopefully uh, that will uh, come up with a, with a result that has to be result-oriented uh, 
uh, not other way around, because sometimes those gatherings, as we do see, uh, are ending up mm -hmm. in the more uh, di differences okay. and, and, and uh, in the more distances. I hope this can uh, minimize the distance among the fighting groups. OK, let me just bring in Omar Samad here in, in D.C., because both you and, and Mira Yassini seem to be on the same page, yet you have your former president very critical of this particular attack. And we are now getting word through our, our news service as well that uh, civilians on the ground, though they were not hurt, uh, according to official uh, sources, are very angry uh, about this uh, attack happening in the Nangarhar province. So how do you allay the anger of the public at large when they vote in the politicians that have actually agreed to have a, a bomb uh, thrown on uh, land on their on their land on their on their country. Uh, you know, Mr. Karzai uh, speaks on his own behalf, of course, and has had his peculiar views. In but he's an influential views, voice, isn't he? Uh, for a few years, he's still an influential voice, uh, though, in your country's politics. He, he can be. He, I, I'm not disputing. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that he has his opinion. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent the Afghan people uh, agree with him. Uh, I think that um, we will see over the next few days to what extent there is public outrage or public support or public understanding for what has happened. Again, if, as I said earlier, if there are casualties, uh, civilian casualties, if this operation has been a failure, if it, is not, it has not hurt ISIS, which is a threat to everyone and all of us, uh, to the extent that it, ha it should have, uh, and if it had not been coordinated with the Afghan government, which is representing the Afghan people, then it would be a problem. But it seems like um, at this point we are at the beginning, initial stages of gathering and assessing the damage and what has happened. Now, beyond this, there's a as I said, there's a military component to this. Then there is a strategic component to this, and the strategic component is much more complex. And I think that what Mr. Karzai and some of those who have been voicing uh, displeasure with what has happened uh, are mostly concerned about the local and, and kinetic and military aspect of this. Uh, I think that uh, we all agree that ISIS is a threat to all of us. So I don't see uh, how the Russians or others would, cr would, would consider this uh, uh, as a bad move or as a move that is targeted at them. We need to differentiate between what has happened in one case versus the other. If we are all going to be on one page fighting groups such as ISIS or ISIS affiliates, wherever they may be, and as the Russians are concerned about ISIS presence in mm -hmm. Afghanistan, they should uh, look into this uh, from a different angle and not mix it up with everything else that is happening around in the region. Well, indeed, Mr. Matusov, can I bring you in here from Moscow? Because obviously Russia is concerned uh, about ISIL. It's, it's concerned about how it could affect the Central Asian republics that are uh, allied to uh, Moscow. And it doesn't really want ISIL knocking on its door. But there are incidents uh, globally. Sometimes they happen, obviously, uh, in Russia as well. So how uh, important is this issue of dealing with ISIL in Afghanistan with the Afghan government's approval and, and working together, if possible, with NATO or the US? At the moment, it seems unlikely. But is this a consideration? Well, uh, I think that uh, Russia in, uh, invited to Moscow to conference on Afghanistan, the United States too. Russia is much interested in participation in full scale the United States in all discussions concerning Afghan, uh, Afghan situation. And the 12 uh, countries will be present in Moscow except the United States. So I think that it is uh, w one of the lacks in our diplomatic and political activity. We would prefer to, to work with Americans, with uh, NATO organizations, to prevent spreading IS in Afghanistan. And on this base, I think we find a very good uh, approach from uh, uh, government, uh, Afghani government, Afghan government, and I think that uh, approval, uh, presence of Afghan government in, to, to Moscow shows that they, are, they understand this danger, mm -hmm. and they are sharing our uh, our uh, position in some way. So I hope that uh, Afghan. Afghanistan will be not the place for rivalry between Russia and 
and uh, uh, the United States, because uh, when they are uh, having some different interests, uh, all this gap between them using by you will be used by uh, IS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, so to concentrate may, on main danger, may international interject? terrorism. If that, let's bring in uh, Omar Samad. You want to say something? You're nodding in agreement, I think, slightly. But please come yeah, in. Yeah, I, I want to say that I agree that uh, I agree that Russia and America should cooperate uh, as they have since 2001. Uh, with the rest of the international community, with the exception of just a couple of countries who have played a spoiler's role in Afghanistan, uh, they have all uh, cooperated. Now, o over the last three, four years, uh, the alignments are changing and shifting for other reasons. This does not mean that on Afghanistan uh, we should have discord. What we should also not mix apples and oranges. The meeting in Moscow is about how to promote the Afghan peace plan with the Taliban. It's not about IS. If this were about IS directly connected to IS, then I think that it would have been of a different nature. The Americans have their own reason maybe for not participating because they have doubts about Russian intentions. The Russians have, behind everybody's back, been meeting Taliban officials, and there are claims, unsubstantiated, but claims, and serious claims that the Russians may be even financially and militarily helping the Taliban. This is unacceptable for the Afghan government, regardless of whether the Afghan government is in Moscow or not. It's unacceptable for the Afghan people to see Russia uh, sort of have this change of heart all of a sudden and start uh, uh, using Afghanistan uh, as a ground for its geopolitical activities. But while... And and I, then I, I would have itself, to interrupt this there and say, encourage. <laughs> I would have to interrupt there, Mr. Smart, and say that yes, it is an accusation that's made, but it is unsubstantiated, as you say. So therefore, the question is, how do you then deal with the Taliban? Because for the last decade or so, uh, NATO, the West, Russia has all been fighting the Taliban, uh, but all of a sudden, ISIS has made its mark because of its brutality. Where do you start with peace talks with ta the Taliban when um, they? as a group and individually, they're not a uniformed army, are, are constantly scuppered, or the talks are constantly scuppered. We seem to always be going back to stage one. It seems that we never move from so-called peace talks the, the, the with the talks Taliban. Are scuttled, the talks are scuttled by the Taliban and their sponsors in Pakistan. E everyone uh, knows why the talks are scuttled. There are, there are other strategic interests at play when it comes to the Taliban, mm -hmm. the continued war in Afghanistan, through the Taliban and the presence of new cells such as IS. There is a, there is a d indirect correlation between the two, okay. but at the same time, the Afghan government and the Afghan people would like to see a genuine, sincere effort towards peace, yes. But okay, it is not the Afghan government or sure. the Afghan people who have scheduled it. Well, let me, let me give the last word to Mireis Yassini. I mean, obviously, many eggs, uh, balls to juggle at the moment. You have the Taliban on one side, you have the ISIL on the other. At the moment, what would you say is the government's priority? Because they ha have a fight on two fronts. Well, the government priority for the time being is uh, ISIS, uh, because the international priority is the fighting uh, against ISIS, because this is declared a terrorist, international terrorist organization in Taliban, uh, not, according to their version. But we have gonna subject it from both angles. Uh, uh, both uh, Taliban are hitting us, bomb blasts, suicides, bombing, mm. entering hospitals. Lately, they enter uh, the Shahid Daud Khan hospital, and uh, dozens of people were slaughtered, innocent people. This was claimed by Daesh. Uh, we are in calamities, living in calamities. But mm -hmm. the Afghan and the international uh, priority is first. Sure. Uh, Daesh and second Taliban. And uh, they're thinking the Taliban can be brought to the uh, negotiation table or they have more uh, uh, land in their power. But to us, both of them are, 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 are our enemies. Our priority might be different from the international priority. The things what we see in Afghanistan today, uh, that is not seen by the international community. So the international community has to help us uh, in fighting both uh, entities. Uh, Daesh and Taliban. Okay, well there unfortunately we have to leave it, but I'd like to thank all of my guests, Mirais Yassini, Omar Samad and Vashislav Mutazov. Thank you gentlemen for joining us on this edition of Inside Story.
and thank you for watching as well. You can, of course, see the programme again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sahil Rahman, and the whole Inside Story team, thanks very much for your time and your company.